G'day guys, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back for another episode of Wasteland Survival. So, last week's episode we got ourselves into space, we mined a whole bunch of gold, and then we basically landed back down on the planet, and finished off a few little things with the landing pad, but we didn't get too much done. So, in this episode, I basically want to... Well, I should probably weld this block up. Um, whoops, don't have enough steel plates. Yeah, so in this episode, I kind of wanted to make a start on getting the atlas done and building a printer for that. But I kind of want to finish all of these landing pads before I go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, I just kind of want to finish everything off um, before I go ahead and start another project because I tend to do that quite a lot. So, um, obviously, the only thing I really have to do, and, oh, by the way, in between the last episode and this one, I actually went ahead and finished the lighting for the landing pad for the Atlas. Um, so, a couple of things I want to do. So, first of all, I kind of want to add in the trenches that we have here, um, like here, and then here, um, and do the same sort of thing for the atlas as well so I'm gonna to have to put the projection there to kind of figure out where I'm gonna do those another thing that I kind of want to finish is obviously what we started off here and um, as you can see it is now daylight and I really do think that looks pretty good um, so I think that's definitely something that I'm going to implement um, and then also what I want to do is implement the exact same thing across here. Now, one other thing that I kind of want to do is I want to add some lights in here. Um, very similar to all of the other accent lights throughout the base. So I want to do that as well. I'm probably going to play around with the color of these pipes as I'm not really loving the look of them. Um, they kind of don't really stand out enough, so I might actually go with yellow, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. So I think first what I've got to do is finish what we started here. So let's see, I will need a whole bunch of steel plates for this, um, as I think the new industrial blocks only, uh, only require steel blocks. Well, steel plates I should say, so let's have a look at those. I keep forgetting what they are called as well. The beam block, yeah, so I need to finish placing those, but before I even do that, what I need to do first is actually place in all my blocks here like I said I was going to. And then from there we can place in our beam blocks. Now, before I get too far ahead, um, I'm not sure where exactly I want to place the interior lights here and we can weld this block up and actually somebody while I'm here and I've got some steel plates on me somebody actually mentioned please weld this block up so I will do that now there we go right now it's all complete and it's looking pretty nice uh, with the exception for that block there but that's supposed to be missing right kind of getting sidetracked here like I always do right so let's um see how much space we have here so does that take up a block no I can put these blocks here like this now do I want to place interior lights basically here so I kind of got to figure out where I actually want these lights but I think what I'll do is I'll place them probably about maybe for can I go two blocks so we could just go two blocks down from there and then we could go back two blocks and then down two blocks or maybe we only need to go that far down oh and look I found another block that isn't welded up properly hmm interesting and it looks like there's a one there missing, but that's alright, we're never going to see that, so I think I'll just leave it. Alright, well, before I start with the lighting, I think what I'll do is I'll finish up all of these industrial beams, and then we will kind of figure out the lighting from there. Alright, guys. Well, I have finished placing down these blocks for all of these pillars, and I've got to say, these new blocks are looking quite nice. 
Um, I have also done... I've, I've kind of done this side, but yeah, there's a little bit of an issue with that. So um, basically the issue that I'm running into is that um, if we just like have a look at the side of this um, pillar here, and let's just say that um, we place down this block here, and then we place down this block here, um, and then I go ahead and I place down the other block which is like the mirror image of that one or the opposite side to that block where is it uh, it is this one yeah so you can kind of see that I can't place the other one that goes like that and the issue is that it kind of looks like this and it looks incomplete um, even though it's not welded up it just doesn't really look right so you can see here we've got the nice cross hatch pattern but on this side it doesn't really work out so I think what I'm going to do to get around that issue is I'm actually going to change these legs once again so I'm going to make them probably maybe one block further out that way um, and maybe I'll go two blocks I, I need to go at least two blocks because what I need is I need these blocks to be arranged like this so what I need is I need let's say we have this one here so I need that to be like that then I need this block here then I need one block spacing then I also need this and then I need this again um, so and this one block spacing in between is going to be where my interior light will be and that's going to basically light up these things from the inside um, the other way that I could do it is I could just make them one block you wider low. of course um. what else the other thing I could do like I was saying is I could make them one block wider and I could just kind of put the interior lights on the outside of the pillars but I kind of want to have them on the inside because I just think that would look really cool um, I don't know so I guess we'll probably get a little bit of a better idea of how that's all going to look at night time but yeah I think that is definitely the way that I'm going to go so let's just grab some jetpack fuel here now what I'm going to do though is I'm going to start placing down the lights for the um, the other pillars for the larger landing pads so well, what I'll do though is I'll actually withdraw a whole bunch of interior lights here just so that we actually have the components to place them down so and you can see that we have been visited by the Crimson Tormentor once more and just look at the size of this thing it's crazy um, and he's like six and a half kilometers away yeah I really don't want to mess with that guy and you know what it kind of reminds me that I really need to get around to beefing up the defenses around the base so I was thinking maybe what I'll do at a later stage is maybe have like a turret emplacement coming off the end of the landing pad here um, and having another one there and then also another one on the end of these um, landing pads or this landing pad as well and maybe even what I can do is place a couple here um, I don't know something to think about but I certainly think that I need more remote turret installations like what I've got there um, I don't know what I called them before but you know you guys kind of know what I mean so what I've done on this side is I've kind of placed a, I've ground out a block which I think is pretty much the middle so obviously the middle here would be like this block but if we go down two blocks then we would go across one block and that's basically where this middle part here is so that is one block spaced apart from there and then another block spaced apart from there so then from there it has to basically go up another block to get to the top of the landing pad so we've got one two and then three blocks in between the interior light and the bottom of the landing pad so that means i should be able to set the radius to about 15 meters 
so let's just say theoretically the light sits here then you know it will go all the way to the edge here and it will go all the way to the edge here as well so i think that's probably going to be the ideal spot for that interior light and oh by the way if you guys have noticed i've actually changed my tool colors to um what i always wanted them to be which is basically the um army camo look so yeah now they say that in the latest update they've actually fixed the issue where your suit wasn't displaying correctly and it was changing every time you respawned so apparently that issue has been fixed and i am curious to know if the tools issue has been fixed as well because i actually paid real world money to get these skins so it would be kind of nice to be able to use them so yeah i mean i guess we'll just kind of see how we go with that now what i need to do from this point is try and figure out where the middle is all the way down and it's a little bit tricky so i'll probably do this off camera and then i'll place down all my lights and what we'll do is we'll make them the same color as this orange and honestly i reckon at night it's just going to look really really nice now a couple of other things i wanted to kind of talk about with the lighting as well some people basically mentioned in the comments that it would be nice if I could use spotlights and honestly I I really do agree with you the only issue with that um, and the, the main issue that I found with spotlights is they start having weird bugs especially when you start using a lot of them so if you guys have watched this series for some time you might notice that in this corner here we kind of have some weird glitching with the lights so um, I don't know why it happens but yeah I have noticed that when you have a lot of spotlights some of them tend to just like kind of not not turn off but just not display correctly um, now I have since gotten a new graphics card um, so I don't know if that's really made it yeah you can kind of see the issue there so you see when I move back those lights at the back there turn on and off that's the kind of lighting glitches you get when you have a whole bunch of spotlights so I am kind of reluctant to use them anymore um, I just think that it will make the game perform even worse not not so much perform even worse but the lights just don't work properly so i don't really want to run into that issue and that is the main reason why i haven't used spotlights um it is a bit of a shame that they do that but hey you know that is just the way that the cookie crumbles i guess so we're just gonna have to deal with it um so yeah what i'll do is i'll place all the all of the lights in these pillars here um, i'll do the same in that one that one that one and then what i'll do after that is i will widen these pillars by a couple of blocks not sure how many at this stage i think i need to go at least two so you know what i might make them almost as wide as these ones yeah maybe i can make a match exactly the same as each other but i guess i'll figure that out in a moment all right guys i'll see you once i have finished all of this Alright guys, so I've been at it for about 45 minutes and I've finally changed these pillars up. So basically, if we have a look at it from this side, you can kind of see, kind of overshot there a bit, you can kind of see that I've added one additional block on this side and that should hopefully give me the room that I need. Now, there was kind of... I. I realistically needed to go one block more so that I could arrange these um, industrial pillars the way that I wanted or these um, these beam blocks but I guess there are kind of a couple of things that I can do to kind of get around that so obviously the first thing is we can use these blocks here that they added in the last update um, and we can just place these behind so let's see if I can find the right one is it this one yeah so you know we can just go ahead and we can place these in and um wait what's that that's the tip that's the base that's the tip that's the base so you know we can just go ahead and we can place those in and we can weld those up because to be honest with you we're not really going to see this too much um or well, the second option that i have is i could do something even a little bit different to that 
So I guess the second option is we could, let's just grab some steel plates here. The second option is that I could go ahead and I could grab something like this. So let's see here. We can grab this block here. And then what we could do is we could place that something like this. So instead of it being um, Fuel low. Oh no, that really sucks. Okay, so instead of it being Fuel inset critical. by one block, I could just kind of make it flush with the back. And I, I could do that for the one over there anyway, because to be honest with you, we're never really going to come around the back here and see it. And although I would love for it to be inset by half a block like it is across the road there and on the front, I just... Yeah, I don't think it's really 110% necessary. And then it kind of solves my problem with the lighting. Now, I, I could make this another two blocks, like one block there and one block there, um, just so that I could make this even. But then I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same size as these pillars. And I kind of want these pillars to be a little bit smaller um, than those pillars over there, just so that it makes those pillars look like they are actually holding more weight. Otherwise... I'd have to make these ones bigger and then those ones bigger over there and that's something that I just really don't want to do. Especially in a survival scenario because um, the amount of resources that kind of thing requires is just insane. So, and not to mention the amount of time it takes me to weld up all this stuff. Um, it kind of gives you an appreciation for creative mode um, when you're building massive projects like this um, in survival. Now, another problem that I've run into is um, I'm not sure how this has happened, um, but I seem to have used up all the ice that I had. So I must have left my O2H2 generators on, and I knew that I should have set up an O2H2 generator that was somewhere off the grid. But, yeah, I just, I never kind of did it. So I don't know why I, I didn't do that, but for some reason we have no ice left. So if I search for ice, we've got nothing. Um, if I search for bottles, I think I've got one, yeah, I've got one hydrogen bottle, and that is everything that I've got. So that is all the hydrogen that I have left. Um, so I think what I might do to get around this is, um, let's find this tank here. Um, let's turn that on, and what I'll do is I'll set this to auto refill. Um, then we'll go to the inventory, we will find our bottles. And I'm going to move all of those over to this tank here. And we're just basically going to use the hydrogen tank from now on to kind of fill these bottles. Um, and then maybe we can find another hydrogen tank. Now that, that should be plenty. So at some point I'm going to have to go and do some mining as well. So how much hydrogen do I have? 17.7%. So yeah, I don't have a lot. Um, I think... Before I actually go ahead and fly the Atlas, I'm probably going to have to go and do some mining for ice because that ship just consumes so much fuel. So I think I'm going to have to do a bit of, um, yeah, a bit of mining for some ice if I ever hope to get that thing off the ground. Right, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disappear and I'm going to complete this lighting and then I will also complete these blocks on the back and I think I'm going to go with this method here so let me just quickly weld these up so yeah as you can see you can kind of see what I mean so these ones will be flush at the back whereas the ones at the front will be indented by one block or like kind of half a block and that's just so that gives it a little bit more dimension makes it just that tiny touch little more interesting so anyway I'll see you once this is all done okay guys well I've spent probably about an hour and a half doing all of this stuff um and yeah as you can see this is the result so I think it looks pretty good I mean let me know what you guys think and also while I was doing that I also went ahead and I finished off all of these pillars because what I had forgotten to do was actually change the color of the back of these um, to the dark gray and then add the 
kind of like the U-turns at the top of these lights as well. And one other thing I kind of noticed was there's this nice little wire um, in the middle actually follows that path as well so that's a pretty neat little addition as well but I mean you're probably not going to see that from you know so far away so it's just kind of like a minor detail so yeah I think um, these landing pad leg lights look pretty good um, you can definitely see like the detail in here and yeah I just think it looks really good but I mean yeah by all means let me know what you think and um, so obviously now it's night time so we can get a really good look at the base from a bit of a distance and if we move all the way back here you can see that the landing pads are just so much easier to see now and yeah like we're a couple of kilometers away and I can still see them really well so I think I've definitely achieved what I wanted to. Um, it is a bit of a shame that I couldn't use the traditional interior lights and maybe light up a lot more of the center of this landing pad. But I don't think I'm really going to worry about that anyway. So, And another interesting thing is I thought this would actually take um, like a fair bit of CPU on, on my computer. But if I just hit Shift F11, you can see that I'm still running at about you know 100 FPS. And then when we look into the garage, it drops down a little bit. But if we kind of turn around and we look at it from this way, then the FPS kind of goes up a little bit. So I think the main bottleneck on my computer at this point in time is my CPU. Because I got myself a new GPU, um, which I mentioned before, which is the 6800 XT. So uh, yeah, and that's what I use. Um, I use all the software on the AMD Radeon to actually make all my videos and record everything. So... Yeah, I did have a Vega 64 before, um, but it was kind of starting to struggle a little bit, so I thought it was about time to upgrade it. So next, I've got to do the CPU, and then I expect that the FPS will go back up to 100 or 120. I think this game is actually capped at about 120 FPS, but yeah, correct me if I am wrong. So... The other thing, there are a couple more things that I want to do, so as I mentioned before, I kind of want to recolor these blocks here because I don't think they kind of stand out enough. Um, it, it's quite interesting because before I kind of wanted to hide them behind a cover because I thought that these square tubes were ugly, but these ones here I kind of want to um, make them a little bit more visible than what they are currently so maybe we will try this color and we'll see how it looks so I'll go with this yellow um, although maybe that's a little bit too bright yeah I think maybe it's a little bit too bright maybe I can try and make it more of a, a dirty yellow if that makes sense so let's turn the the shade down a little bit so maybe we can go with something like that let's see how that looks mm, it's still pretty bright to be honest maybe we can go for like an orange or something so what other colors do we have here um, maybe I can go for something a bit more like that yeah it doesn't look too bad alright so I'll color all these blocks that color and then we'll see how it looks. Unfortunately, you know, the good thing is it's night time so that I can kind of check out the lighting for the legs that I just created. But at the same time, it kind of makes it difficult to see how this sort of stuff is going to look um, because obviously it's just, yeah, absolutely darkness. So we'll just continue coloring all these blocks and then we'll see how it looks when daylight hits. Now, one other thing, well, I just noticed that my jetpack's running out, so I better go and <laughs> fill that up again. Man, I'll tell you, every time I start recording, I fill up my jetpack, or I gotta fill up my jetpack. Right, cool. So, uh, what? There we go. All right, so, another thing I kinda wanted to do here is, I wanted to move this connector out a couple more blocks because what I want to do is well first let me just make sure it's empty let's grind away this connector and let's grind away that now what I want to do is something very similar to what I've done here um, turn my lights back on so I want to put these blocks around like that um, but 
I kind of want them to be a little bit further out so maybe we can start those blocks like kind of here or something um, and then we can place the connector there and maybe that will look just that little bit nicer so how am I gonna do this alright so I want to place this block back there Hang on. and then we'll grind this one and then we can add another two tubes here so where's my tubes grab these make them this color I think I might modify this color a little bit later I'm not sure if I'm a hundred and ten percent happy with it but I guess we will just kind of have to play it by ear and see how we go put one of those down and then I will just put my corner piece tube so we'll see if I have the resources on me to do that which I don't but that's fine because it won't take me long and I'll get rid of this Energy critical. FPS meter because it's annoying me a little bit right okay so now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll place in my connector so we'll place our connector there although what color do I want to make it I'll make it this color so I'll place that there weld this up oh we'll get back to that later and then I'll grind all this out and I'll make it look exactly the same as the the other sides or all of the other little landing pads because I was kind of tempted to use these blocks here but I couldn't get the pattern to match up around here so yeah I tried to do it that way but it just kind of didn't work out and the pattern didn't match and it just looked kind of yeah like a bit of a botch job if I'm being honest so I think this will look just that little bit nicer so how did I do this one did I have the black in the center no I had the yellow in the center so what I'll do is I'll pinch this color so we'll grab that and then we will go up to the top here and I think I need to get myself a little bit more energy while I'm at it okay so got myself some more energy so let's continue on on doing this uh, so now what I want to do is find my blast door blocks and I'll add in these ones, the blast door edges and we'll place them there like that and then another one there and then another one there like that and then we can place these ones down and I want to make these the same color as the ones on the other landing pad which is that color there we'll go ahead and place these down and then from there we can weld them up and maybe I will use the weld ship for this actually no I won't what I'll do is I'll finish welding up the connector and then I can just kind of withdraw all the components from that because then it will save me pulling out the welding ship and having to waste time with that so it says that I have all the components that I need for that but we shall see all right cool so then I'll just kind of dump everything into there, grab all my steel plates. So, how many steel plates do I have left actually? Uh, still got a fairly decent amount. Oh yeah, <laughs> more than enough, more than enough. So yeah, that should be heaps. And what I'll do actually is I'll add all of these to the build planner so that I don't really need to worry about actually finding the steel plates. And isn't that weird? The weld has gone a little bit strange. And you know what? I was really getting excited because I thought, oh yes, they finally fixed the welders and all that stuff. Oh, actually, now it is the color that I want it to be. Oh, except my drill's changed again. Yeah, I was, I was really hoping that they had fixed that issue, but it seems like they haven't fixed that issue, so... Yeah, a little bit disappointed about that, but obviously there's not really too much I can do about that, so yeah. Oh well, hopefully eventually one day they'll fix it. One thing they did fix, which I was kind of excited about, and I want to test this in one of my other worlds, is they said that they changed the optimization. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm still not sold on the orange. Anyway, as I was saying, they did say that they changed the optimization for 
the um, large hydrogen systems. So on my asteroid base, and I'm not sure if you guys have seen that video. It's a pretty old video now, and it's pretty low quality. The audio is pretty not not that great. Um, but on that base, my computer really struggles to get 60 frames a second. So I want to basically spawn into that world and see roughly what sort of changes it has made to that. Right, so another thing that I kind of wanted to do is I really want to replicate this design here for the, um, oh, what, are, somebody called them something else. I think it was like thruster cutouts or something like that. It was a really good um, name for it, but I just can't think of it right now. Um, I basically want to replicate those same blocks here. Um, so yeah i'm gonna have to get rid of these but once i get rid of these i'm not sure if i can then place down my blast door blocks and then i also want to do this oh yeah that's right i think it was thruster ditches yeah that was um that was the name of it so let me just oh it seems like a oh another crimson tormentor I really hope he doesn't get too close. Yeah, you notice the game kind of hitched there for a second when he appeared. So that was a bit weird. Although, i got to admit, it's not really surprising because, yeah, um, that sort of stuff uses CPU to spawn. And, yeah, it is a massive ship. So it, it does kind of make sense that the game lagged out when that happened. All right, so what I'm going to do here is just turn on the projector. And we'll just have a bit of a look at the atlas now as you can see the thrusters or the main thrusters that i'm worried about is these ones here so if i build blocks here i think these large thrusters can go a distance of about seven blocks and you can see that we've only really got four blocks there so i am going to have to make thruster ditches for those as well now these ones here at the front which are the other main thrusters i don't think i'm going to need to make a ditch for those because you can see that they are also four blocks but because they are the small grid ones the damage range of those thrusters is only really three blocks now i do have a couple of random thrusters placed throughout the hull here like these ones here but i don't think i'm actually going to make a thruster ditch for those because um, they are kind of two blocks high and I think the only time that these are going to cause any damage is when the thrusters are at full power and that's when um, they kind of, the, the thruster plume actually goes three blocks. And the other thing is I don't really want random holes everywhere. Alright, so what I'll do is I'll get rid of all those temporary blocks that I've placed and I'm going to go change the thruster ditches for the pilgrim's landing pad on these side thrusters here, make them look relatively the same as those, put the barriers around them and um, I might have to get a little bit sneaky with those barriers but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. I'm sure I'll figure it out and then from there we can start thinking about building the printer for the Atlas. Alright, well I'll see you once this is done. Alright guys, well as you can see I have finally finished and yeah I think this looking pretty good. Um, maybe what I can do as well is I can add in some accent lights to these as well but I think maybe I got to calm down a little bit with the accent lights <laughs> um, then again they do kind of look good well at least I think so so um, yeah uh, this is basically the result um, now what I did here is you guys might remember in one of the previous episodes we added in these um, 
Oh, what are they? Just the catwalks to kind of space the landing gears out from the landing pad a bit so that when the connector actually connected, um, the landing gears could actually attach to something. And I think if I spin myself upside down, you can still see there's kind of a gap there. And I guess, you know, since they added in the new blocks, we could, you know, kind of use something like these blocks here. But... I don't know, I still kind of like the catwalk look that we've got going on there, so I think I'm probably going to go ahead and keep that design around. And then, at least what it allows me to do is kind of make this barrier kind of wrap around here and then wrap around the landing gear here. So maybe what I may have to do is extend this just a little bit or um, maybe change this one here and then just put like a um, railing that attaches from there to there because it is getting a little bit close to the landing gear there but I don't know I think it should be okay um, as long as we get ourselves relatively straight um, and I guess you know we can kind of use that as a feature to kind of line ourselves up um, now, one last thing that I kind of want to do before I go ahead and actually um, start thinking about the printer for the Atlas is I really should add some spotlights to the bottom of this ship so that when we are landing on something other than this landing pad, um, you know, we can kind of see where we are. So maybe what I'll do is I will add them here. So. Um, you can see up there, I believe that is the stairs. Um, so obviously, spotlights aren't airtight, so I kind of need to add them in an area where uh, it, it is going to be still airtight for the ship and not cause too much dramas. So what I'll do is I'll make them... What colour should I make them? I'll make them black. So we'll make them that colour. Place one there and one there. And I will need to go and grab the components for them a little bit later. But I think also what I may do is I may put some here as well. And I think I have a little bit of an idea of how I'm going to do this. So what I think I will do is I will place these down. But because it's going to look a little bit weird with them being here. But, and then normally the design goes that way, whereas these ones will be a little bit different. Maybe what I can do instead is just put a window there, um, just so that it kind of looks the same. So, yeah, it'll just... I don't know, I think it will look pretty nice. So, let's place a spotlight there. Um, but actually, before I build the window, I actually need to weld these blocks up, don't I? Uh, so, maybe I need to go and grab the components for those first, and then weld those up. So, let's dump all of that in. Let's grab some spotlights. Um, and I think I've got enough bulletproof glass to do the window as well. But I guess we will see Energy if that is low. indeed the case. Now, which way is this one? Oh, they're different directions. Darn it. That's unfortunate. Alright, let me fix that up. So, I will place this one like that. That's much better. That makes me feel a lot better. And then we will finally weld up these ones here as well. And hopefully these ones are in the same direction as well with the bars across the spotlight going um, from the front to the back of the ship. So, um, what I'll do though is I'll actually create a group for them. So, let's go into the K menu here. Um, let's find our spotlights and you'll see that they will be the spotlights that are white. So we'll call this, um, what should I call this? So Pilgrim Landing Spotlight 1 through to 4. So copy that and we will change them all to this. 3 and then 4. What I'll do is I will select all of these, I'll make a new group and I'll call them the Pilgrim uh, Landing Spotlights. Save that. I'll make them 
190 215 is the color I'll change the radius to its maximum the intensity I'll leave the same the offset I'll just leave that that's all pretty hunky-dory I'm not too worried about all of that stuff but then what I need to do is make something on the hotbar for these because I don't really want these things to be on all of the time so pilgrim landing spotlights toggle block on and off and then we will go ahead and we'll turn those off because yeah as I said if you have too many spotlights in the game then the CPU kind of goes a little bit crazy and it can't figure it out so um, are they actually still on no they're off okay cool so now what I want to do is basically place some windows there and actually another thing that I want to do as well is I kind of want to add some corner lights to these little landing pads here for the um, mining ships if I ever use them in the base um, honestly a lot of this stuff I'm probably never going to use but it's um, I don't know a lot of this stuff I'm kind of just building to make things look nice and um, all that sort of stuff I'm not really too concerned with um, well I guess I am concerned with am I going to use it or not but why can't I place a window there huh uh, can I place a window there alright that's a little bit strange ah well that doesn't matter I think I should be able to place my window here so let's grab Oh, actually, I don't know if I'll be able to do this. So I'll probably have to go for one of these flat windows. Damn. I wish there was a block that was around that could go across there like that. That would be nice. But I guess there's not really too much I can do about that. So we'll just have to kind of settle with this block here. And, you know, this isn't going to be perfect. It's not going to light up the entire area where the ship is going to land. What? Kind of stuck. Um, but I guess it's going to be good enough so that we can kind of see what we're landing on um, before we actually smash into the ground. Right, so now that that little distraction is done, um, let's go ahead and let's finally get started on this, um, this printer. Now, the first thing I need to do, obviously, is start running a conveyor. Now, I think what I want to do here, though, is I kind of want to create the conveyor somewhere here. Um, in fact, how am I going to do this? Um, maybe what we can do is we can kind of make a bit of a tower that goes up. And I want to try and have a connector maybe here. Or what we'll do is we'll go for a conveyor junction. Um, and then we will basically place a pipe that goes all the way down and I'm not too worried about making this one the square ones because um, obviously I'm going to change well th this is only kind of a temporary thing so um, it's not going to be permanent and I'm not too worried about these being the blocks that I don't really want to use in the end so we'll just kind of create a temporary structure to get this thing running um, and then we'll just kind of run our tube all the way across. Now, what I might do though is I might actually run the tube that I want here. So maybe we'll try this yellow and we'll see how the yellow goes. Um, oh, I need to put a tube in there. But I think what I'll do is I'll actually make that a um, conveyor junction. So make that one of those then we'll grab our tubes and we will run them all the way across here so what did I use on that side I just used the um, this one here I think yeah so then we'll just kind of run our straight tube without the flanges on it and as I said I really wish they would have added a tube with a flange on both sides I reckon that would have just made the game look just that tiny touch better but you know I'm not complaining these blocks are still really nice so I'm pretty happy that they've added them to the game in the first place then I'll add one of those blocks um, and then finally we'll add a tube doesn't really matter that it doesn't all match but I guess it, it kind of does the job and then from here we need to start thinking about our actual printer now Probably what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to offset the printer. 
Oh, not the printer, sorry. I'm going to have to offset the blueprint forward a little bit, even though that's not going to really be its final resting place. Um, and then maybe we'll even have to extend it so that the landing gear is... Well, so that it gets really close to the edge here, and maybe I can weld up some of it by hand. Um, because I really don't want to... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to do that to make the printer actually fit behind the ship. So, um, how long is a piston? And, well, I think a piston is three blocks. Or is it two blocks? Yeah, I think it's... Okay, so it's like two and a half blocks. And then we're going to have to go a third block. I'm going to have to use these tubes. So, I wonder if these ones here have a smaller collision model than the standard tubes that they added to the game. Um, but before I get too excited, I kind of need to figure out how many pistons I need. Um, so I can't remember exactly how long this ship is. So I'll just, um, I'll quickly figure out how long it is and then that's going to tell me how many tubes I actually need, or how many pistons I need, sorry. Alright, so I've worked out the ship is about 162.5 meters long. Um, give or take, I think it's actually a little bit shorter than that, but I basically measured from this point right to the end of the landing pad there. Uh, so what that means is we're going to have to make... We're going to have to basically put in 16 pistons here, so... Um, that's going to be quite the little spiral Fuel job there. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll do the same as what I did with the other printer there. And I'll extend some blocks down. And then we'll run some outrigger wheels on the side here. And thankfully I left three blocks spacing in between, you know, like the edges of the landing pad and the blueprint itself so we should have plenty of room to actually do that so yeah that's going to be pretty nice so what i'm going to do though is i'm going to place all of these pistons down off camera because yeah i mean i'm sure you guys get the gist of what i'm going to do here and in fact i think i actually need to go one block further out this way because when I come back around at the back of the piston it's going to get close to this tower or maybe I just don't really need to worry about it and I can kind of go um, maybe I can spiral this around go all the way down here loop back around go up this way then go over then over this way and then back over that way with all the pistons um, yeah I think maybe that's probably what I'm going to do so all right I'll be back once I've built all of this monstrosity of a piston setup all right guys well I finished all of the pistons and the conveyor ports and conveyor tubes and everything I need to to kind of connect up to the rest of the printer um, and my PC's kind of taken it a little bit hard and the frame rate dropped all the way down to like barely 60 frames a second. Although if I do turn the projector off, it does kind of increase to around about 70 to 80. So yeah, this is taking quite a lot. Now, unfortunately, I did run into a little bit of an issue and you can probably see that here. So if I make my character completely straight, you can kind of see that this side here is kind of falling down a little bit so what I had to do was move this piston uh, this one here I believe or maybe it was this one I had to move this one forward a little bit because I wasn't actually able to build this tube um, because it was kind of interfering with this um, conveyor junction here now I thought um, one way to get around that issue was kind of to turn on the shear inertia tensor between all of the pistons although for some reason it seems that I no longer have that option so normally what you would be able to do is select all of the pistons and then there would be an option here to share the inertia tensor so as far as I know I'm not exactly sure what that setting does but it basically makes things a lot more stable and I figured that would be able to fix my issue although for some reason I can't seem to find that option this time so 
Um, I've done a little bit of research on the issue and apparently it is due to mods. Um, some people say that you can reload the game and it will fix the issue. Although so far I haven't really been able to get around this issue. So I think really my only option here is to kind of fix it the traditional way. So what I plan to do here is basically add in my conveyors and my welders and then build them all the way to the floor. So we probably only need to go um, two blocks close to the floor and from there I will build some um, outriggers like kind of um, a frame that will go all the way to the edge here and then place down my wheels and then from there I should hopefully be able to make this all straight although I am a little bit concerned that this is going to be a bit unstable without that share inertia tensor so just before I end the episode I'm just going to quickly go ahead and build that so what I basically want to do is maybe add a conveyor port in the middle here. So we need a conveyor, welder, conveyor, welder. So what I'll do is I'll find my welders here. Uh, where are they? Here they are. So we will build a welder here like this with the port on the side. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll temporarily get rid of the rotor and I'll just add my conveyor junction here just so that I don't really need to switch um, hotbars every 10 seconds just to get this um, built. So, and then we'll go with another welder here. And then we'll place our conveyor here as well. So that will be like this. And is that the center? Yes, it is. All right, so now from here, I'll just go, I'll build this thing very similar to how I've done the other printer in the past. Oh, actually, I can just see a mistake that I've made already. Alright, so it seems that the welders keep changing direction, which is a little bit annoying, but we're just going to have to work around that. So we'll just continue placing. Actually, yeah, I've got auto alignment on, so that's why that's doing that. So let's place a welder there, then another conveyor junction, then another welder then another conveyor junction and so on and so forth until we get to about I think this is the level that I want to kind of be at um, or maybe I want to go one block further down do I want to go one block further down I think at this point I'll just go ahead and I'll add so yeah that seems to be the bottom so and you can see when I get close to this thing it starts shaking around so I'm hoping that clang doesn't explode the entire thing um, <laughs> uh, but I guess we'll have to kind of play that by ear and see how we go so from this point I'm just gonna start adding some regular light armor blocks and from here I can attach my suspension on the side of that so I think I need to go one more block yep all right so we'll go three blocks from each edge and I think that is pretty much where I need to be so whoops I think I need to go and grab some more components now hopefully I actually have enough room to build my suspension parts but I guess we will see how we go with that I am kind of concerned that the share inertia tensor isn't turned on and enabled but yeah hopefully I'm able to kind of get around that so all right so that's about where I want it so let me see if I can now go ahead and place down my wheel suspension so I want a 3x3 three three left no I want a 3x3 three three right here so I guess honestly it doesn't really matter um, and you can see I can't place my wheel down all right so maybe what I'll have to do is go one block further back and hopefully I'll actually be able to place my wheel down I'm really concerned that I won't be able to add that and if I can't then yeah I'm not sure what I should do all right cool so it's let me place the wheel down so hopefully that's all I need to do on this side as well so have I got I've got three blocks space here and I said it was two and four blocks spacing on the other side between the edge and the printer 
So hopefully from here I can place down my left wheel suspension, the 3x3, and hopefully we can just place that there and the wheel will appear. And it looks like it can't. Hmm. So how am I going to get around this issue? I think what I may do is just kind of... So I'll put a block up here, another block here, and then I will grab a piston. And we can maybe use the piston to actually push this side up a bit. So I'll grab the components for that and grab the components for that. And I will weld these up. And I'm trying to get this done as quickly as possible before the episode ends. Because I kind of want to get this sorted out before I actually end the episode. Now the question is, is it going to interfere with that? I don't think it will. I think it should be fine. But we will see how we go. So I think right here I probably want to set this piston with a maximum distance of about 5 meters. Which is 2 blocks. And we will reverse that and we'll see how far that will get us. I think that should hopefully be enough to actually push it off the ground enough so that I can then build the suspension. Alright, so let's go ahead and build our suspension now and see how we go. So let's place that down. And fantastic. So I can place my wheel. So now all I need to do is retract this piston here. So we'll reverse that. And now all of the weight should be held by these wheels. So I'll add two of those to my build planner, two of these. We will withdraw the components for them and we will weld these up. Okay, so they're all welded up and that's pretty much the base of the printer done. So now I just got to play around with the settings of the suspension, but that's going to be everything that I have time for in this episode. So you guys are unfortunately going to have to wait until the next episode where I can actually finish this thing. And if we go back here and we take a look, you can see that, well, at least I think it looks a little bit straighter on this side. It was kind of skewed that way to the right. Um, but now I think it looks a little bit more level, so I think that should be a good basis for the printer. So anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Wasteland Survival, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Wasteland Survival. If you like this episode, um, and you like this content, then please consider leaving us a like, and if you don't want to miss another episode, then definitely consider subscribing. Alright guys, I will see you next time.